that has uh, been laid before us in the wake of the Trump presidency um, and how to build community in the face of racism and xenophobia. So Trump won. We kind of need to come to terms with that and let that sink in a little bit, those words, and understand what that means. Many people have been in denial, are disheartened, are hurt, are dismayed, and are angry. Um, and now that we have time to come to terms with him winning, or are starting to come to terms with it, it's time for us to start mobilizing and organizing. Um, I don't know how many of you saw the SNL skit right after Trump, uh, the election results came out with Dave Chappelle and um, Chris Rock kind of saying like, we as black people are not surprised <laughs> um, that this has happened. And I'm just kind of, it, it's a balance too, right? Because being a black person, you are faced with racism on a daily basis. The system is not built for you. And like the gentleman was saying before, Oregon was built to be a white mecca of the country. Black people were not allowed to even be there. Um, and if you were in the state, every six months, you had to be beaten, whipped 40 times until you left the state, every six months. And black folks still stayed here and still put up with it. And so we need to understand that racism has never gone away. Um, even during Obama's presidency, I had a lot of my friends saying like, racism is dead, it doesn't exist. But I think uh, during his campaign, Trump repeatedly made blatant accusations and spread falsehoods about our country and our residents and who we were as a people and picked certain groups to, to be that scapegoat, saying things like Mexico is bringing in criminals and rapists, um, calling for registration of Muslim people, believe, people who believe follow the Islam faith, and uh, calling himself the law and order candidate, which I'm not sure if a lot of people caught, but that's very reminiscent of the Reagan and Clinton war on drugs and the Measure 11 and Measure 57 laws that um, lead to what, what Teresa was saying about the uh, school prison pipeline. And these words were aimed um, at the core of hate for the other, for the urban dwellers, for the foreigners, for the people who are not Christian. And it's like we've gone completely back in time into the 1940s, even further back. And that's not the country that we want at all. Um, and as you can see, like these are some things that I, I pulled up. A lot of graffiti and uh, racist incidents are happening like it's basically on November 9th, right away. Um, Oregon is number 10th in the nation for hate incidences. And uh, so what do we do as lovers of peace and uh, progressives and liberals? So how do we fight hate? Well, we need to do more than come together and protest. That is a great thing to do on the forefront, to be there, to show up for uh, your brothers and sisters of color, of a different nation, but you also need to work from the inside. Um, so I work for the Urban League of Portland, and it's an affiliate uh, of 90 national Urban League uh, associations. And we were established in 1945, I believe the Urban League of Portland was the second uh, Urban League affiliate after the nation, uh, the National Urban League back on the East Coast. Um, and we're one of the oldest organizations that serve African Americans and black people, but we also serve all Oregonians. Like, you come to our doors, we're not going to turn you away from the um, And we work to serve all Oregonians as a civil rights and advocacy organization. We provide direct services for <coughs> folks who are homeless, folks that are hungry, um, people that are looking to be part of the workforce and contribute in a meaningful way and people are just looking to get involved. And that's the um, department that I head, which is the Advocacy and Civic Engagement Department. And so what we work to do is to bring together uh, the community and organize around issues that are facing the community. 
So what some ways to get involved with the Urban League in particular um, is to become a member. You can just go online and sign up right away and you can get email alerts as to what is going on and ways that you can volunteer. You can attend one of our events. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. It would be awesome if you guys just followed me. It's Mira underscore U-O-P-E-X on the Twitter handle. Um, you can call a friend and tell them what Belt with the Urban League is doing. You know, once you're following, once you're a contributing member. You can write letters to editors of newspapers, especially like organizations like Oregonian or Lambert Weekly, um, Portland Observer, things like that. You can also talk to your local um, um, elected official in the House and Senate side. So that's more of the work that I do. Um, I am a lawyer and environmentalist by the way of environmental law, which is extremely difficult to, to be in that space as a black woman. Um, I have a science background as well. And so when I saw that I was working for an environmental uh, consulting agency, and although I had been very progressive personally, I didn't let that come up in the workspace. There was a period where it was every single day a black person was being killed by the police, part of the Black Lives Movement, and I didn't have a place to go. So I decided, you know, I'm going to go do what I need to do and become more involved politically to help people navigate for what we need from the system, to really get in there from the inside and tell our elected officials, we don't like what you're doing, here's a better idea, this is what you should do. So, um, so usually what we have, we have uh, legislative days and lobby days where we come together around a law or a bill that affects the community and also our community partners, um, for example, around uh, health care with undocumented immigrants, um, uh, reproductive health equity, we're working on a bill right now about ending profiling in the state to make that better, um, and then covering all kids and advocating for affordable stable homes for low income and regulated communities of color. So there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, you, like I said, you can just come and talk to me directly if you have anyone has questions right now, you can definitely do that. Um, become a member of the NAACP, there's Verde, there's Unite Oregon that specifically helps uh, refugees in immigrant communities. There's organizations like Oregon um, Latino Network. And that's what you can you can really do and just I would I would say like when we call upon you to show up, come come show up. And I really appreciate the space and Carissa did a really great job of bringing you here together right now. But don't let the momentum stop. Don't get disheartened, don't get discouraged by what you're doing. And we are also working on different ways to um, to report race incidences when we see them, to report graffiti when we see them, and to also um, reach out and create a supportive network for each other. Because it's it's crucial right now. Yeah. So I'm not sure if uh, any other questions or any other specific things that people can think of, or if you want to learn more about the Urban League, just come on through. Because the work doesn't stop for us. There are still people coming through asking to get signed up for Obamacare. And that's in serious, serious danger right now. Another question. Uh, do you guys do the uh, workshops or the uh, high school, high schools for the public high schools? Yeah, so um, we actually have a youth program where we provide tutoring services right now, um, and we are working on reaching out to um, high school students, particularly to do a civic, like, a civic engagement leadership training. Um, it's on the docket right now, and I actually can't remember the date of that. But yeah, we are doing a lot of work at the Portland Public Schools, and all levels, not just high school. Those schools as well. Are you, sorry, are you guys in Washington County? Yeah, so I know the name is kind of uh, misleading because we call ourselves like Urban League of Portland, but we're supposed to serve the whole state in Southwest Washington. Nice. So Vancouver as well, and it's just interesting that um, map that was shown where the white supremacist groups are, that's where the black communities are as well, and that's where they've pushed out. Yeah.